As a gamer, I'm sure you pretty much ask yourself all the time, what's the best NVIDIA driver for gaming? That's exactly what I'll be testing today, because I'll be comparing five drivers, and I've added an extra element to add some extra accuracy. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right guys, as mentioned in the intro, I'll be comparing five really good NVIDIA drivers the most recent driver, the previous driver, which I used to highly recommend, 537.58, 537.34, 528 528.02, and then a requested driver, which was 517.48. Guys, this benchmark took a hell of a long time to do, and you're gonna see why I added, I added in an extra element. But before we get to that, what I will ask, if you subscribe to the channel, please make sure that you have the notification bell selected so that when I do drop a new video, you are notified. Hit that like uh, button, please comment, and then share if, if you will. Really will help me with the algorithm. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you do subscribe if you find this content helpful. And then I do, uh, on my homepage, I have Throw stop um, tutorials, MSI Afterburner tutorials, and more. And then I do also have videos uh, like the full CPU uh, optimization here. Uh, the step one and two shows you how to unlock undervolting in 10 gen and newer, and this shows you in 9 gen and older. But getting to my results. So, as you can see, guys, I added an extra, uh, extra, AO of, uh, extra layer of benchmarks. Just to make it a little bit more um, accurate, I used to do average FPS and 1% low, but now I've also added in 0.1% lows. So it really, it just adds in that extra layer of accuracy. So, because quite often drivers look the same, but if you, if you record 0.1% lows, that's where you'll see the difference. Um, just before I get to my results, all games are tested in medium settings, except for the newer games. Uh, single player, FSR 2.1 or 2.0 is on quality and then lastly I do test on a GTX card so um, uh, my most recent driver comparison people are moaning because I didn't mention RTX super resolution but I wouldn't have seen that because I've got a GTX card so it doesn't appear in my my NVIDIA control panel if you are um, if you do have an RTX card 545.84 does have RTX super resolution in the video control panel so um, yeah I'd, I'd highly recommend this latest driver if you're on an RTX card um, if you're not on an RTX card I still would recommend 537.58 but let me get to my results and I'll show you what so for the latest driver 545.84 uh, when I add up all the average FPS's I get to 863 when I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 645. And then when I add up the 0.1% lows, I get to 580. So a very solid result, especially if you're on an RTX card. But if you're on a GTX card, I'll show you why I recommend 537.58. Also, by the way, this is the first driver where they've uh, taken inroads uh, or steps to make inroads into the DT, uh, DPC latency issue. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 865. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 645, so pretty much the same as the latest driver. And then when I add up the 0.1% lows, I get to 530. So incidentally, the best out of, of, out of all these benchmarks that I did is 537.58. But on RTX, you do have that RTX super resolution in the video control panel. Then the previous driver I used to recommend was 537.34, but it's fallen behind after the last Windows update. Um, when I add up all the average FPS, I get to 863. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 631. And this is over 15 games. And you'll see it's, it's actually fallen behind by quite some bit. And then when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 479. So yeah, you're probably gonna notice more pronounced micro stuttering in this driver than the two drivers that precede this. And then um, a driver that was, uh, I used to recommend for the majority of the, uh, the beginning of the, the year was 528.02, but it really has fallen behind after Windows updates. Over 15 games, when I add up the average FPS, I get to 844. When I add up the 1% lows, and this is where it's really taking a back step, I get to 626. And when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 464. So guys, if you're on uh, 528.02, don't recommend it anymore. I recommend 537.58 on the 
on GTX cards and 545.84 on RTX cards. And then the requested driver, uh, at first I thought this was gonna be a horrible driver, but it actually does perform even better than 528.02. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 844. When I add up the 1% lows, I get to 636. And when I add up the 0.1% lows, I get to 467. So uh, not as good as the more recent drivers, but at least it's better than 528.02 and 537.34. But I would highly rec would recommend, if you're on a GTX card, um, use 537.58, good DPC latency, good average FPS, good 1% lows, and the best 0.1% lows. And then if you're on RTX, like mentioned before, all right, I recommend being on 545.84 because you do have access to your RTX super resolution in the video control panel. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. And if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. It's Friday, it's the beginning of the week. The super, uh, the, it's the semi-finals of the Rugby World Cup. Can you tell I love rugby? I'm very excited. Have a good one. It's people like you. Cheers.